Okay, just check. Hey guys, it's me, C. Calvert. In the last video, I tried to do a horror reaction, but it appeared that it was actually much louder than it actually was. So today, we're going to listen to four horror stories the same amount of time, and one of them actually, the guy that wrote this, Mr. Nightmare, I would go visit him. Don't visit his channel, don't visit him, that'd be kind of creepy. Four of them, four, one of the horror stories actually happened to him, which is personal. Um, yeah, why well, not get into it? But, let's go. I'm about to read you four true stories, three of which have been written by anonymous authors, and one of which has happened to me personally. When I finish reading all four, I want you to comment which story you think happened to me. Number four. Okay, here we go. I was 17 years old, and it happened on a late summer night. I don't like that. My dad and my little brother had gone to a Boy Scout camp out. Mm -mm. My dad Guys, was one of I the don't like the masters. eye. I was home alone with my mom for the weekend. She was already in bed at this point. It was about 2 in the morning, and I was just finishing up my late night gaming. I had to go to the bathroom one more time before going to sleep, though. While sitting on the toilet, playing games on my phone, I heard the faintest little tap on the bathroom door. Mom? Is that you? Mom? I yelled. It wasn't windy or anything. There didn't seem to be any logical way to dismiss it. I slowly and nervously opened the door. There was nobody there, but my bedroom door was now shut. I was certain I hadn't shut it. I went over to my mom's room and told her that I thought somebody was in my room. She didn't take me seriously and told me that she didn't know what to tell me. I tried to convince myself that maybe I did shut my door. I opened my door, feeling extremely freaked out, and when I snuck a peek into the room, I felt like my heart exploded inside my chest. Uh oh. I could see a hand sticking out from behind the dresser in the corner of my room. Somebody was hiding there. I ran to my mom's room and locked the door behind me. After quietly freaking out, telling her that there's a man in the house, she finally believed me and went straight to the phone to call the cops. I put my ear up against the door to try to hear anything going on outside. I eventually heard the man's footsteps come out from my room and slowly come closer to my mom's room until making it right outside the door and stopping. I could see the outlines of his shoes through the bottom crack of the door. He tried the doorknob, but thankfully it had a lock. It seemed the lock was enough to persuade him to give up because I heard him stomp downstairs and out the front door. I hurried to the window to see which way the man was heading, but he was already gone. Number three. When I was younger, ten years old at the time. I'm very hungry. My mom smell some sausage or something. Me stay home alone. Ugh. We had been watching my mom's friend's dog while they were on vacation. Oh, this my is much better. Nights, so she told me that they would come around back since the dog's cage was right next to the back door, and that I had to let them in. I sat in the den by the back door with the dog by my side while I watched TV. He then started to growl and bark while looking out the window into the dark. I tried to see what he was barking at, but it was too dark. Of course, I assumed it was my mom's friend coming to pick up the dog. I went over to the door, with the dog following me, and turned on the patio light. I couldn't see anyone out there at first, but the dog was still barking. I made sure to peek at every corner of the yard, but then I saw someone in the garden by our shed. It looked like my mom's friend. They seemed to be bending over, picking something up. I assumed she was admiring my mom's garden or something logical. I then received a disturbing phone call. I prioritized answering the phone as my mom was strict about me always answering the phone when I was home alone. I left the dog to continue barking by the door as I picked up the phone hoping it was my mom. And it was. She told me that her friend wasn't going to pick the dog up that night as they wouldn't be getting home until past midnight. I began to stutter as the pure horror prohibited me from speaking coherently. I managed to finally blurt out that someone was in our yard, and my mom started screaming like a lunatic. She told me to get up to my room, lock the door, and hide under the bed while she called the cops. I obeyed and laid there in silence for a good ten minutes until I got a knock at the door. I sprang uh -oh. up and out of the room, making it halfway down the stairs when I saw a face looking in through the window of our front door. A face of a guy staring right at me. 
a face so unsettling that it disturbs me thinking of it today. I screamed at the guy that the police were on their way, but he didn't move. He just kept staring at me like a statue. I ran all the way back upstairs, tripping twice and back to my room. I waited another few minutes before another knock came at the door, followed by a muffled shouting noise. It was the police this time. They scanned the whole premises for the guy, but he was gone. They took me into custody until my mom arrived at the station. Mm -hmm. After that incident, she started having a babysitter watch me again, all the way until I was 12. Number two. When I was 13 years old, me, my little brother, and my dad were upstate in the tax fields, staying in the old trailer we had up there. My mom and older brother didn't like going up there, so it was usually just the three of us. This one particular night, my dad and my little brother were out picking up Chinese food. The trailer was pretty far from any grocery stores or food places, so they were gone for a good 45 minutes. All there was to do at night was watch the very limited selection of channels on the TV. Yes, okay, I've had that problem before. In that trailer all alone at night. And I've had that problem. There was problem. absolutely nobody else around for at least half a mile, and the blinds barely covered even half of the windows. My biggest fears came true when I heard a very light tap on the window. It didn't sound like an intentional knock. It sounded more like something accidentally brushing up against it while walking past. I took a look outside to see if it was my dad and brother, but instead, I saw some guy right outside the window. He turned and noticed me, and then ran off into the woods. The rest of our stay there, he didn't come back. But the next time we went up there, which was the following summer, the front door to the trailer was open, and every closet door had been opened. Somebody had broken in, but luckily there wasn't anything of value to take. Number one. Okay, here's the last one. A long time ago, me and my girlfriend were looking for a private place to be alone together. I don't know. Since our parents were always home. Uh, just saying, I think this one sounds the uh, most believable. Um, about... I just think the fourth one sounds like it's him. By the way, this one's four minutes long, God. There was a vacant house in the corner of the oh. lot that hadn't been owned for a few years. The back door was always left unlocked. I would know because me and my friends had been in there before. We went in through the back, but before we could even get upstairs, there was a knock at the front door. Do they have to put the knock We knocking? looked at each other with worry. What if someone had caught us sneaking in? She peeked out the window, but there was no one on the stoop. She made sure that the door was locked before turning back to me. I assured her it was just some kids playing Ding Dong Ditch. We made it only halfway up the stairs before the frantic knocking on the door came back. Okay, God. She checked the window again. The porch was still empty. She opened the door this time and still couldn't see anyone. I wanted to look tough and impress her, so I stepped outside and yelled at the pranksters to try it again. I shut the door and waited behind it, hand on the knob, ready to throw the door open. I just waited there for at least a minute, and was about to just forget about it, when I heard the blood-curdling scream of my girlfriend. I turned to see what she was screaming at, and I screamed as well. Just barely in the dark, we could see the dark silhouette of a huge humanoid figure very slowly making its way down the stairs to us. We ran past it just in arm's reach and left the house the way we came. We ran all the way back to my house, both of us out of breath. We know it couldn't have been an old person. They had to be at least seven feet tall. Nobody was supposed to be living in that house though. I even asked a friend who was living across the street from the house, and he said it's been vacant for years. We both agreed to keep quiet about this story, but I still occasionally have a nightmare about the incident. I think it was the fourth one. Fourth one sounds like the most true. Out of these four stories, the one that happened to me is number two. If you've been on this channel for a while, you would probably know that I did used to have a trailer upstate New York and I actually got inspired by this experience to write a fictional story about it that's also on this channel. 
Yeah, I was thinking about this. I saw a guy outside the window who happened to notice me and run off. I'm pretty sure his only intentions were to scout the place out for breaking in and stealing something. And I think I'm 99% sure he was the one who broke into the trailer and left all the doors open. It might not be the scariest story ever, but it was definitely one of the more frightening moments in my life. Poor Mr. Nightmare. Um, okay. Wait, is there anything at the end? I'm gonna watch the rest. Oh, thank you. Look at this. Yuri gave me my thank you for watching. Okay, it's over. Okay. That wasn't that bad, I will guess. I mean, I feel bad for Mr. Nightmare. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, tell me if I improved on my mic. Because I'm actually trying to get a perfectly good video. If you guys want more, go ahead. Tell me what horror story to go off to next. Uh, until you guys do, I'm going to be using Mr. Nightmare's Nightmare Horror Stories. <laughs> and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh, wait. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and notification bell. Sorry for no intro or outro. I'm just feeling like I shouldn't do an intro or outro because, you know, I don't need one. What's the point of having one if you, if we just want to get right into the good stuff? The juicy, yummy, good stuff. See you guys. Bye. Peace.